good. Yeah, no, we're good. Cool, that was weird. That was popped weird. Up, popped up saying uh, OBS disconnected. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sports games. Yeah, because I know you've spoken very fondly of Aladdin for Sega Genesis. Oh, hell yeah. I couldn't even tell you if I played that a lot as a kid. Like, I know I played it a lot, but I don't know it's, like, staying power it had. Like, I couldn't tell you if I, excuse me, hung around with it a lot outside of, uh, you know, when I used to play it a lot. But uh, there's a lot of rentals, too. Uh, we have one, there's a boxing game, Greatest Heavyweights. We used yeah. to play a lot of the, uh, the loose uh, sequel to... Uh, Vander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing. And, uh, played that one a lot. Uh, there's mostly a lot of Sonic. Uh, we'd rent Vector Man a lot. That was a big one. God, this Lakers team is terrible. Ah, you don't want Van Axel and Diva? <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> no! Why? That's why. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, it was just it was a lot of your staples. Just not Altered Beast. Oh, my wife stocked in doing the tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, still, it's, it's like when Nate Robinson would beat people. Put it up. Yeah. There was a couple years ago. It was uh, Isaiah Thomas' last year at the Celtics. Mm -hmm. At one point, there was an in-game jump, jump ball. Oh, man. Where he stocked in just owning your ass. He had to jump against Giannis. <laughs> it was the greatest picture. It's up there with the Muggsy Bogues Manu Bowl picture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a new Muggs, he's just holding basketballs to make himself the same height. Yeah. I always love, I know he stole the tip, but the, the Nate Robinson tip off against the player that was much larger than him. I think it was Bosch? Yeah. And they're like, that, that's a stolen tip, they're like, but how clever. <laughs> oh, jeez, this is going to be bad. Come on. Ah, oh, shoot. Come on, you depth perceptive little weirdo. Oh, my God. Gets the tip, gets a block, and then can't do shit. <laughs> Had his moments. Okay, Malone, you gotta, like, do stuff, buddy. There we go. Mid-range. If you ever want to see something funny, by the way, just made me think of this. If you're ever just, like, bullshitting at work or something, you have some free time. Mm -hmm. Which we never have at our jobs. <laughs> okay. um, there's, like, if you go back on Basketball Reference, because they have, like, their data goes back to, like, 81. Yeah. And you can go and, like, find, like, um, old box scores and stuff like that. Look at the 97 NBA Finals box scores of each game. Okay. Because there's one game the Bulls won by like 42. Yeah, every single player on the Bulls roster scored. And then they lost the next night. Yeah. The next game. I, I remember watching that game live. I couldn't tell you who commentated it, but... You saw 54 points in an NBA Finals game by a team? Uh, well, I, I saw the... I, I It was the 90... It was 97, I think you're right there. Uh, But it was the Bulls Jazz, and every single player... Yeah, it wasn't the on, flu game. ...on the Bulls roster that played that night like actually it was every active player because they I mean they blew them the fuck out of the water so Phil Jackson literally played everybody uh and I think well, I feel like it was Winnington was the last person to score I remember it was one of the taller white guys on the roster yeah uh but I remember he hits the shot and the uh announcer goes every I has been dotted bulls have scored tonight and I just I don't know why but that that call has always stuck out to me and I always remember that I'm like I don't think I'll ever see everyone on a team score again. Yeah, probably not. It's like, and then occasionally in baseball, you'll see like the game where like everyone hasn't hit, like everyone in the lineup, and you're like, oh, that was cool. Where they they round the lineup out in the in the inning. You've seen that, yeah. yeah. But like, I'm talking like even in so man, like, like there was that year. Orny. Yeah. There was that year where like, um, well, obviously there was the Aaron Boone two grand slams in an inning game. Mm, and, yeah. And then um. But like even like just in a game, you'll occasionally like watch a baseball game, and the team will like everyone and they throughout the nine innings will get a hit. And you're mm -hmm. like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's that's a rare thing. Like I mean, it's one of those things that you don't think about. But like, I'll never probably see that again. Like how I for a while thought I was never going to see a triple crown. Yeah. In horse racing, and you know, like two of them later, I'm like, oh, this aren't, these aren't cool anymore. Somehow I've been at two no hitters. Yeah. Like <laughs> fuck. With the same pitcher. Uh, I wasn't at no actually um, I was at so I was at Homer Bailey's one in Cincinnati mm -hmm. and I was at Jake Arrieta's one in Cincinnati. Oh okay okay. Yeah. Got it. Where exactly. the Cubs beat the Reds sixteen to nothing yeah. and there was a no hitter. Yeah. That was a bad game. Jake Arrieta man. That was yeah that was when he was like. Jake Arrieta was. That was insane. yeah that was the year they won the series. Yeah. 
Yeah, because uh, I remember they won the series the night before we left to go down for our wedding. That's right. Because uh, I stayed up to watch the end of it. I went to the Bulls actress. Pacers game the next night. Yeah. And uh, like everyone that was wearing was wearing Cubs stuff. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and then they lost, the Bulls lost by like twenty five. Yep, sure did. That was the year Dwayne Wade was on the Bulls. Whoa. I tell Whoa, Malone from way back there. I tell this story on 48 Minutes all the time. It's the w like worst thing ever. I've been lucky enough to see Dwayne Wade play basketball in person twice. Mm -hmm. Once with the Bulls, once with the Cavs. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. It's like me bragging about seeing Gennaro Pargo. Uh, speaking of, there was a Pacers game Sean and I went to. And <laughs> I know where you're going with this. Oh, man. It was bad. Like, that was... A, I don't remember if it was the... Was it the playoff game? Was it the game four where we thought it may have been sweet? I forget. It was because we they, they all kind of blur together. Uh, <clears throat> Sounds like the Bulls playoffs post Eastern Conference Finals. Well, it was it was one of those. It was a, it was a Del Negro year. I remember for sure. And uh, like the Pacers just mopped the floor with them, but for inexplicably, Gennaro Pargo took like 15 shots in the fourth quarter. And Sean is literally <laughs> sitting in the seats, screaming <laughs> at nothing. Just like, why is he shooting? <laughs> he hasn't made anything. But like, literally watched Gennaro Pargo shoot an entire team out of a game. And like, he touched the ball, hucked it. Touched the ball, hucked it. Like, didn't matter where he was on the court. Like, I've never seen someone, I've never seen someone shoot that confidently and that poorly at the same time than me. <laughs> you haven't seen many Kobe Bryant games, have you? But it was Kobe. Like, Kobe's in it. Kobe is one of the rare instances of NBA games or NBA players that you know by the first name. Any right? NBA fans that you have that, like, watch this just quit watching because I insulted Kobe Bryant. Like, it's just... But, like, Kobe's a first-name guy. Like, LeBron. Like, Kawhi. Like, Giannis. Like, those are first-name basis players. So, yeah, Kobe's going to have an off night. But, like... <laughs> Near a or, bar he, or he's going to be on a team with Robert Sacker. <laughs> you know? Like, it's one of the two things. But, like, when this is just Gennaro Pargo... Like, first off, that name is not real. Yeah, wasn't he a Kobe Bryant teammate at one point? I don't... Maybe. Or his brother. But, uh... Gennaro's brother, not Kobe's brother. Right. But, uh... Yeah, just Gennaro Parr goes, like, catch and shoot, catch and shoot. In an era of basketball that was not the catch and shoot <laughs> era that we have now. And I'm just like, oh my god. Like, it was one of those instances where it's like, oh god, Vinny doesn't have a playbook at all, does he? It's no. just like, I don't know, shoot it. Because there... I remember... The first instance where I was like, oh, God, Vinny Del Negro may not actually be the right hire was when he, uh, they were playing the Rockets, and uh, he had Noach guarding Yao Ming. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, this is going to be bad. Like, and then Yao's just, like, posting up poor six foot nine white bread Noach, <laughs> just bumping with his ass under the rim, and then just, like, casually laying it in like Yao does, and then Yao puts up, like, 45 points, you're like... Because Noach was guarding him, and you never <laughs> thought to rotate. Yeah, why'd you rotate? No, it's, it's working. It's fine. By the way, if anyone's keeping tabs at home, John Stockton's leading this game in dunks right now. Hell yeah. And if anyone's seen the video of John Stockton playing NBA Jam, Terminator just trying to dunk with himself, <laughs> it's one of the greatest videos of all time. I love the onion. Was it, no, it was onion or hard times? It was hard times. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so I played with, here with the Mavericks, with Jamal Mashburn, one of my favorite players ever. Um, anytime we would, like, do our team previews and there was a former team Mashburn played for, I always made sure to get a question in about him. It was like, we did cover the Miami Heat one time, and I asked about Jamal Mashburn, who played there for, like, four years? If that. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously the Mavericks. Even the Hornets. I was like, oh, yeah, you Mashburn. The, you weren't on the Mavericks show, though. No, when you that were like, Tim's thing. not here, so let's talk about Jamal Mashburn. Yeah, and, I mean, Will had a field day with that. He was a guy, because he was a big UK fan, too. Yeah. And he was like, okay, let's talk about Mashburn. And I'm just like, god damn it. <laughs> Mashburn was, like, the coolest guy for a while. Oh, yeah. Especially, right. like college and stuff like that he had, yeah he was uh, one of like the two guys that had a signature Fila sneaker line with Grant Hill signature Fila sneaker line it was a string of words you don't hear anymore yeah they actually just re-released the Grant Hills again and they're just as ugly as they were then I want them I mean so were those Pistons jerseys I, I would totally buy a throwback yeah if I had the funds to buy it, all the things I want to buy the Stars NBA throwbacks because I'm a nostalgia sucker we had someone 
saw like because I would ask the like, Pistons people like why 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 the knight on the chess piece or why the chess piece on on the jersey and somebody actually like answered that and really it made a bunch of sense and I don't remember what the answer was anymore. Jim Jackson had a little little flashy there. Bank Just having some turnovers. I'm trying to. I can't remember why they had the chess piece though, because somebody made sense of it. Because like, oh, like blah blah blah, knight and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I truly don't know the story either. But now I'm just like, I don't remember. <laughs> this is useless knowledge. I wish they'd wear them in a game again, just for like once. Yeah, they're so hideous. Yeah, and they got worse when they changed they did the red ones. Do you remember those? Mm -mm. They had the red ones with that logo. No. Oof. We play great defense here in NBA um, Jam. It's not really a game for defense. No, it's not. It's a game for goaltending and trying to get on fire. Yeah, I love how we're playing NBA three-pointer. Well, yeah. I mean, you're leaving me open for him. Same. You think fucking Carl Malone's going to be taking threes? <laughs> Sean and I used to call him Dick Threes. There was a card this year in my team up yeah. for NBA 2K where Carl Malone, his open threes attribute was 97. I'm Why? like, <laughs> right? I was like, that's in just... What, in what universe? <laughs> right. Real or otherwise. Stockton with a lockdown D. Ah, oh, still gave up the open shot. Ah, oh, ball game. Foul to, foul to stop the clock. Oh, oh shit. Get, get, the... get it, get it. Pass it. Get out. Three, two, one. Rolls around. Go! Overtime. Okay. <laughs> okay. Of course the rubber match will go to overtime. Of course. Of course. I think I'm wheeling somebody out different. You're wrong. <laughs> nope. No, not, not, not how this is going down. Not taking the ball out of Mashburn's hands. <laughs> Dude, like I told you before we before we started, Mashburn used to own me as a kid on this game. Like, we just make, like, three-quarter court shots. Like, there was, like, a month where I could not get past Dallas, and they were literally the first team you played. And I was like, I hate this. I hated Jamal Mashburn. I hated the, I hated the Mavericks, just in general. I was like, no, nah, heck them. Because they had probably, stupid like jerseys. The time. No, I didn't. I, they were, I couldn't get past them. I was just like, I hate this. This, this is stupid. And like, I would get like a solid lead on them, and then Mashburn would make like a three-quarter court three at the buzzer, and I'm like, I, mm. it's so funny you say that. The first NFL blitz that was the Seattle Seahawks for me. <laughs> oh, I hated them, and it was like they weren't even good. Right. Like, God, come on, come on, get it, get it. Get it wasn't get like it, it was like the, it wasn't like it was like the Sean Alexander, Ricky Waters years or anything like that. It was right. like Trent Dilfer was the quarterback, I think. Yeah. Who was the... Yeah, he was the quarterback, the one with the Ravens, right? Yeah, yeah. Weird. The uh, sp the Onion, when they had that show on Comedy Central for a quick, like, three weeks called Sports Dome, mm -hmm. which was also super really good. Like, I miss it still. Um, they, like, at one point, they were doing their Super Bowl preview episode, and they're like, one of the lines, the guy's like, you don't have to be good to win a Super Bowl, be good at football to win a Super Bowl, just ask Trent Dilfer. <laughs> Stuck yeah. with me forever. You're not wrong. <laughs> now I can't remember, who was the big... Big lineman that was on that team, Saragusa. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because that was the big deal with Saragusa and Michael Strahan. Everybody's like, "Oh, the big titans of NFL sports." And I'm like, "Okay." I remember they were on the cover of a uh, what the fuck? They were on the cover of Sports Illustrated for kids having an arm wrestling match. Oh my god, yeah. Do you remember the Sports Illustrated kids baseball cards that were inside? Hell yeah. There was the uh, the edition they did with Deion Sanders on the cover when he was playing baseball for the Reds and football for the Cowboys, where yep. he was every card. Yep. Yeah. I know exactly I, what you're talking about. No! Oh my god. Okay, okay. Uh, Are you the clock? Yes, it's tied. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> I'm not a smart man. I'm not a smart man at all. All right, double overtime. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Trying to fuck on me. Get it. Why'd you go backwards, Johnny? Sweep the leg. Because he went to Gonzaga. Hey. <laughs> He's the one household name that's class. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gonzaga. I don't, I don't get that hate. Is it because that they're still rated in mid majors, despite the fact being yes, that definitely a plays a part because they're not and like right. people are like you know they're like the team every year. There are they're the Portland Trailblazers that run where everyone's like, man, maybe the Trailblazers win the title this year. Oh, nope, no, they don't. They don't. They never do. And people are like, they're so good. I'm like, cool. Yeah, they play nobody. Right. 
And they're like, well, they beat Duke this year. I'm like, they beat Duke in Maui on day three of a hot-ass gym. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, think, I think you're going to run away with this one. Uh. Oh. Get him. Get him to Carl. Ooh. Scrappy John. <laughs> oh no. No, do not shoot that Carl Malone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what if I shot it into your arm? <laughs> yeah! Stuck there. No! Get in there! Yes! Oh. Alright, god damn it. Yeah, Johnny boy. Come on, uh, uh, Carl with the D, no. So you think Jamal Masters gonna shoot it. He is, but sometimes. I'm like holding my breath. It's fucking <laughs> John Stockton taking a mid-range shot. I'm like, <gasps> no. Oh, come on. This can't happen. Oh, we can't. God, no. 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 Triple. <laughs> triple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> come on. This is the Syracuse Yukon game of NBA Jam. Oh, God. <laughs> Halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> At this point. <laughs> triple overtime NBA Jam game. <sighs> Who would have thought? You just put Jamal Mashburn on a poster. Yeah, where he belongs. I would I would hang that poster oh, no. in my house. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, mashy mash. Get it. Get buckets. Who would have, you know, who, someone's like, I'm glad I paid tickets for the Stockton Mashburn <laughs> shootout. <laughs> uh, it's quadruple overtime? Yeah. When did we have double overtime? Yeah, when did we? It says quadruple. Um, <laughs> it definitely says quadruple. It does. I can't say I've ever seen quadruple overtime in an NBA Jam game. I can't remember the last time I forgot a whole overtime happened. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. Lockdown D. Stock down D. Give me oh my god, that was goaltending, but Oh yeah. <laughs> Hit him with the Stockton slap. <sighs> come on, come on, come on. Damn it. Oh my are you kidding. Stockton slap. There we go. Oh man. Whew. This might be it. Might be getting Big Macs tonight. <laughs> Oh! Ice it. No, you son of a bitch. Ice it. <laughs> son of a bitch. For two? Yeah, Man, what am I thinking? I don't know. You. Oh, no, well, I mean, it's a four-point game, so we're good there. There we go. That shot right inside the key. Money. He called bank. Fucking money. Nah, man. It's not even Sunday. Oh, you kidding me? You gonna get it? You gonna get it? No! No, you're not! No, you're not! I'm gonna steal it. No! Go! No, you got it! Get it! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that was like the best NBA game I've ever played. Thank God. Thank God you took that shot. <laughs> thank God you took that from two. Eight assists for Carl Long. <laughs> Game leading. Stocked it with 91 points. Jim Hall Master at 82 points. <laughs> Stocked it with 91 <laughs> points and seven dunks, five assists. Still a good team player. Carmelo injured 13 people. Yep, Carmelo with a double double in the form of 10 points and 11 blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Bashford had 12 threes and 14 dunks. Damn. I just call that Jamal Mashburn. Yeah, because he he put up that he put up that stat line a lot. Oh, ten, ten injuries. Clay Thompson out of game three. Oh, fancy. That's that's good. The be. Warriors are basically held together right now. It's like it's like a spit. It's like spitting a promise. Yeah. Right. Like it's just they're not. Yeah. They don't got a lot going for them right now. You know. Uh huh. 
You know, I used to like really get upset about them, but I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, you gotta accept it. You yeah, gotta, you gotta accept it. You gotta appreciate it. And in the era that we're in, yeah, especially you know? like as Bulls fans, we can't be like, how dare a team win three in a row? <laughs> <laughs> when like yeah, I watched it happen twice. Yeah, like it's I like like you like you know how I kind of came around on my hatred for LeBron and everything like that. You just gotta respect it. You don't gotta like him. You don't have to have any sort of like ill will or positive will you gotta respect it mm -hmm. and same same how i feel about the warriors like you just we talked about that a lot you know yeah it's appreciating the greatness while it's happening yeah so you i, I don't want to be that guy that's like some dusty old curmudgeon you know in, in in this basement 30 years from now being like i saw kevin durant play and i hated it <laughs> like i don't right i don't want that we're seeing yeah we're seeing the best shooter in nba history like play yeah andrew bogut Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Yeah. And and you know it's. Oh my God. He's got to play it with with Kevon Looney out, with Clay Thompson out, with Kevin Durant out. Between like the, their center depth might be like Demarcus Cousins and Andrew Bogut. Yeah, but Bogut's gonna be busy for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, Andrew Bogut. Man. For sure. <laughs> so I think the. Yeah, they play at 9 Eastern time for those. Yeah, yeah, so about right 12 minutes. Cool. I'm curious about something, though, because it seems like... Okay, yeah, it's back up. Because I was like... The the Twitter thing was like, hey, look, it's done! And then there's another one that's like, hey, look, it's live again! <laughs> this is this is the issue, Tim. I know, I know sometimes you're like, man, doing this just, like, you know, by myself or doing stuff like this, whatever. Like, I gotta tell you, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I can imagine. It's, a, it's just constantly checking and then like I basically like you saw like 15 minutes in I'm like cool everything's gonna break now uh, we experienced something new where OBS was just like I don't wanna work anymore like midstream or whatever never never seen that but it's just so many checks and balances and being like alright like is that broken yep <laughs> how do I fix it what we got then? let's see you, you, you wanna stick with NBA Jam you wanna move to like a like a PS2 guy? You want to yeah, do let's like do that. A... Okay, let's uh. I'm gonna get it on some of you. Should we go Live 05? We absolutely can go Live 05. So oh boy! Yeah. Uh... That was like the. That was the game that we saw the first glimpse of Dwayne Wade powers. Mm hmm. So, no heat. I'm trying to think. It's gonna be the best I have now. It's gonna be the best thing to unplug. Yeah, it's gonna be... I was hoping I could do it without actually having to get up, but uh. <laughs> We will uh, just let you plug your poop again. So you go nuts and tell the kids <laughs> where they can find you. I gotta move some cables around. Yeah, Sean Bradley right now is playing on the screen and in the demo version with. Um, yeah, that's gonna cut off here in just a second. Yeah, so, so uh, go ahead. Get your last Sean Bradley moments in, everyone. And, and go, go and tell the kids where they can find you on the internet. Yeah. All right. If you want to find me, can I like type it in here? No. Oh, I just saw the box. I was pretty excited. Um, so you can check me out at Tim Daniel. That's no S at the end. Literally, that's actually in my Twitter name on my. Yeah, because I was getting tired of getting requests with it being incorrect. Five one eight. Um, I'm on there. So if you like college basketball or the NBA, I cover them both, and I talk about them a lot on my Twitter account, and also a lot of tweets about Reds baseball because I, that's my true psychopathic religious passion. Um. But yeah, so we are on there. Uh, like I said, N48 Minutes Network on Twitter. That's 48 Minutes N-T-W-R-K, so network without the vowels. And hey, if you listen to our shows and you like them because you're a good trooper and friend, give us these nice reviews on iTunes. We greatly appreciate it. It goes a long way for us as well. Um, but yeah, so that's basically all the internet's places you can find us. We obviously have the Instagrams and things like that. Our media team is super good at putting really cool stuff together for us, so... Alex is bumping the lamps. I'm not going to do that. Now, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing i got to tell you. This dual shock's a little wonky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, your, your options are the one with the busted R1 button or the one with the sticky analog control. So I'm going to give you the, the one that doesn't have the busted button. I think that's just proper proper etiquette. <laughs> well, thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. But uh, so I think you'll actually play player one. Uh... Now, you're, if you're wondering why I'm not putting the game up yet, it's because I gotta avoid them their copyright strikes. Mm -hmm. So I gotta, I gotta turn all the. Uh, 
I forgot Mini Carmelo Anthony. Down. That was because his, his rookie years when he signed with Jordan, so he had all the cool like player editions. Now, this is also the NBA Live with the really good dunk contest. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I want to start. I don't care. So you're right. gonna find all of the controls to be incredibly foreign as well. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. I, I did was, that recently. I played something. I could play a basketball game, and I was like, "What? What is going on?" Yeah, these controls don't make a lick of sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're gonna want this one here. Ah. Because this is, I one well, of the analog sticks aren't sticky yet. I've, I've since cleaned them, I guess. Let's see, game, game, what now? End game. Nope. Is it preferences? <laughs> Yeah, mini music volume. Get rid of it. <laughs> you have to. Uh huh. There we go. All we right. can't. We don't have lawyers in the podcast biz. I just, I just, you know, it's just if on, on the Twitch stuff, what it does is it just silences the video, and like that's fine. Like I can, I can handle that. I can deal with that. It's when. It's a. Uh... Oh god, these are oh, these are sticky. Why is there? What did I do to these? Uh, the issue is on YouTube. So, like, I did that that last year. I did that SmackDown Shut Your Mouth stream, right? Yeah. And uh, there was someone in the chat, you know, whatever, no big deal. They were like, hey, oh, leave. No, I wanted to be the piston, so you're good. Uh, they're like, leave the. Chris Bosch is 65? It's second year Bosch, man. They're like, leave the leave the interest music running. And I was like, I don't know. Like, Hulk Hogan has Jimi Hendrix, but okay. And then, like, I hit stop on that stream. I got an email that was like, yo, what did you do? This video is banned. I'm oh, like... Oh, man, this team is... Oh, yeah, they're bad. You gotta, you gotta run through Curry. Uh, <laughs> that's, so this is the other thing about on, on NBA Live 05, right? You're gonna go through here, and you're gonna find teams. He was a two-yard... You're gonna find teams that have really good ratings, but all of their players are shitty. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't even remember this guy. James McInnes. Eric Snow, Sagana Job. Oh, I definitely remember Sagana Job. Verjal. Dewan Wagner. Ira Nubel. The tractor Roger. trailer. Yeah, Pavlovich. Yeah, they suck. Damn. That is... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I know. Oh, I got my secret weapon in Darko though. If I'm going Pistons, so y'all just better recognize. You got a, uh, you got rookie Bogut on the Bucks. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You probably have a really good Michael Red. If you go there. Uh, Lake Show. You got Brian Grant, Lamar Odom, Chucky Atkins. <laughs> Oof. This roster just looks like a mistake. Kareem Rush. I Karan. do not remember Vladi Divac going back to the Lakers. I actually, I looked at that and I'm like, did I do that? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to say 91 for Memphis. Who's on Memphis? You probably has a, have Yeska Vicious on, on the Lakers. I was going to say, like, I was looking at this. Cause it's probably Yeska Vicious time. Jermaine, no, Reggie's still, Artest. Reggie was a 64. A 60, wow. Jamal Tinsley was a 63. It's like he gets blocked by Tayshawn Prince and it's just just gone. Fred Jones. NBA slam dunk champion Fred Jones, uh -huh, sir. The old cockback. Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson was a 63. Austin Crosshair. I don't know. There he is. James, James Jones was a 39. Man. He's still Jamal Tinsley. And Let's a, do it. Oh, shit. Okay. Going to Central Division rivals here. Yeah. This is Malice at the Podcast, as we were going to call Kyle and Ben show. <laughs> nice. I think you have to hit start again, though. Malice at the podcast. When I introduced them to each other, I was like, hey, I want you guys to do this show. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. oh man, my favorite Pacer jerseys. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, we need to think of a cool title. Yeah. And I was like, what do you guys think about, like, since you guys are Pacers and Pistons fans, like, what do you guys think about Malice at the podcast? And then we realized it would be really difficult to search. Yeah. That's but, something you gotta. Yeah. But it's still a great idea that I think we should still copyright. I mean, <clears throat> what was it that I, when you were like, what should we name the college show? I was like, Raiders of the Lost March. Yeah. No yeah. one, yeah. And then like, people were like, I'm not really into Indiana Jones. And I was like, well, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a bummer. But I, I was, Court, Court Stormers, I thought was good. Court Stormers yeah, was we talk about that a lot, how we missed that name. Yeah. Um, 
I do really like At Large Bid though. Yeah, At Large Bid was good. Dropping balls was funny. That was. That was that was a good draft podcast name. Yeah. Fucking dropping balls. <laughs> that was one of my like really late night ideas that I was like I wrote down so I didn't forget it. Yeah, and like was it? Sean made the graphics, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was all. That was the one thing I'm just like, where did you have time to do that? And how did that just come to you? Where did you find that clip art? <laughs> like, I'm sitting here. It took me two weeks to make this shit. And I'm just like, how did you do that at work? For ours, um, Kyle went to 99 Designs and actually did a contest. That's what uh, Sean was telling me. Yeah, and it was. It's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I well, when I, when I first saw it, when it first showed up, it was just a solid white backdrop. Yeah. On yours, and I was like. I really like the basketball with the mic in it and all that stuff. Like, that's really cool. And then like I saw it with like the the wrinkled jersey, and I was like, oh shit, that come, that comes together really well. The orange background is really sweet on it. Rashid was the <laughs> Larry Brown. You know these like these. So I went back and played 2K11 recently. I told you I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. And um. Okay, well, that that's gotta go. This camera's got to. Yeah. Go. So, you know, like, now in the 2K games, when I do the Legend teams, they don't have the head coach in there? Yeah. 2K11 had Phil Jackson on the 91 Bulls. Really? Yeah. I don't think they had Pat Riley on the Lakers, though. I'm trying to remember what Sean and I used to always play at. Sideline? Probably. Yeah. That's what he plays now, basically. And, uh, yeah, it's sideline. He hates when I play, like, behind the point guard. And he played... Because I like to see the offense move. Mm-hmm. Hey, in this game, do we have a box in one since we saw the Warriors run it the other night? I think the box in one is in, the, is in here. That's amazing. I think you can... Do I, I back out of it? Okay, so try, nope, triangle. I need, yeah, I need you to do it. It doesn't like me doing shit. Then triangle again. See, th- this was the like the weird adaption I needed to make, too. What? What? Why is it just so focused on me being Ben Wallace? Did he just shoot a layup from three? Yeah, you hit the dunk button. Oh, I forgot there's a separate button for that. Is my... Is this my controller? Just in case we're wondering, I don't know if we can fight in this game. I doubt it. I legit can't do anything. The face buttons on this controller aren't working. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I can move them, I can thumbstick it, but, like, everything else... Is incredibly broken on this controller. So this may not. This may not work out. This may not last very long. <laughs> yeah, face buttons aren't working. No, they're not. Huh? Yeah. That would explain why you couldn't change the camera. Yep. Start works. Ugh, this controller is really filthy though, too. So it's probably for the best. Yeah. So we're gonna have to. Uh... Call shenanigans on this one. Yeah, we can probably move to like a. Uh... <laughs> My wife just texted me and said, "Is that the red one? If it was, if it's broken, it's because of our child." <laughs> no. Uh, it was on, she's talking about the PS3 controllers. So the PS2 is uh, single player only. <laughs> That's. I think I have an extra controller upstairs, but I don't feel like trying to run and go get it. Yeah, I feel ya. So. All right, you get to call the next one then. I called Jam and I called live. Ah, uh, all right. So we're gonna. Uh, Take a look. Yeah. Just do speed runs of Lion King. I'm down. <laughs> Dude, that game will own your ass. There was an episode of Up, Up, Down, Down. They played Toy Story, I think, for PlayStation 1 one yeah. time. I really like that. Yeah. I really, really like that version of Toy Story. I thought that was like, actually a pretty solid. Toy Story 2 is a super good game mm-hmm. for PlayStation. I think it's actually still available on the PlayStation, like on PS3 when you go back and play. Well, not really anymore. Yeah, cause yeah, the, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. Hang time. Hang time. Hell yeah. So the, uh, with Clay Thompson, before the game, the Warriors were four, or minus four and a half. Yeah. When they just announced Clay Thompson being out there, now minus two and a half. Because they're basically being held together by, like, gorilla tape. Right. That kinesiology tape. Yeah. What we got here? That's like the Cesaro special tape. Just call it wrestle tape, you know. Yeah, just just go, just go with it. It's a very good trial and error to do this and see like what games still work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The streaming world is uh not something I've tapped into just yet. 
Will I? That's the question. You know, the blowing of the cartridge thing is really good, except when the dust gets in your eyes. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure that's terrible. I'm a favorite. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, it is entirely likely, because you talk about a game I played the shit out of. This was absolutely one of them. Back in the days when Michael Jordan wasn't allowed in games? Or he didn't put himself in games? He was, what, Live 2000 he was in? Yeah, he, 99. Okay. With Tim Duncan on the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry, it was 2000. Yeah. Because um, you had to beat him in a one-on-one -on -one game to unlock him. Mm -hmm. That was like the first year EA had Legends. Mm -hmm. And I remember like the only way I could beat him was I'd play with Larry Bird, and I would just shoot threes. Like so lit yeah, literally, I had I had the PlayStation version of Jordan versus Bird. It's just me now. Oh, yeah. Huh. Did we just get the last life out of the Genesis? <laughs> I hope not. I, I hope not, too. You've got more games to stream on the Genesis. I was told to flex on you, Alex, by Nagderp's Nest. Uh, I guess, I mean, I beat your ass three games to two and, and jam, so I don't know. I mean, one of those games was another game because it was quadruple overtime. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good stuff. Oh. Was it because you... Yeah. Yeah, it's because I unplugged something. <laughs> Well, while we got time, let's talk about Super Mega Baseball. Jesus. <laughs> I, I could go for days. I know you could. For like 70 hours in that game. You're like Captain America's I can do this all day. That's your uh, Super Mega Baseball. Yeah, except people just get really pissed. <laughs> They're just like, God damn it, he's talking about that fucking baseball game again. It's great. I know. Come on. Do you remember like Xbox 360 on Xbox Live? They had the MLB stickball game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't good. Uh. Did... Always the thing that always broke my heart the most was um, when they were like, guys, on 360, we're bringing back Turtles in Time, remastered. And I was like, yes! Yeah. And I bought it. I paid money for it. And then they're like, well, we have to take it off the market, and you don't get your money back, and you don't get to play the game even though you purchased it. <laughs> yeah, I think I accidentally deleted Or not accidentally. I probably purposefully deleted it from my old 360 hard drive. And... <laughs> so it's College Slam I put in Okay Alright I'm excited Just for the sake of College Slam And uh And Neg Just so you know It's not hard to flex on On me when I'm fucking wearing Pajama pants <laughs> On the internet All right. You didn't wear You didn't wear your Confident pants to For me to hang no, out I, Why would I double up On the confidence pants man? I don't know What good is that Gonna do me I'll tell you something funny This game is bare bones as fuck. <laughs> Look at it. Is what got me into college basketball. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. Literally. Oof. Ah. Where are you? Which controller do I have? I have the actual one this time. Okay, one. Three. Press and start. Hmm. Oh! I don't know what you did, but they, you got it. I pressed the A button. That meant, sure. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? It's everybody. In that case. But it's everybody in like 96? It's not everybody. Oh, who's not on there? Can't go past W. Who are you trying to get? Zucane? Xavier? Uh, oh, oh. Strange. The 96 Wake Forest would have been Tim Duncan. 
Yeah. That would have been his sophomore year. Okay. Oh, God. That's like my favorite Villanova logo. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. This is when Syracuse was the Orange Men. Yeah. I always love that St. John's logo. It's so 90s NBA. Mm hmm. Marcus can be up in this. Yeah, we could play the Calipari Bowl. Some Michigan. I'll go with the heels. Okay, okay, okay. I was, I was waiting, seeing what you were gonna do. Not that it matters, you know. <laughs> yeah. That the, was a really good UC team. In the scheme of things, yeah, I was thinking about it. Let's do. Let's, let's represent and such. All right, I will take um, point guard. Same. And I will take a small boy. You're, you're going your one, your three. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one, three here. Okay, I'll do the same. Okay, okay. Trying to think, that three was probably, if I can remember my college basketball knowledge off my head, that might have been Antoine Jameson. Ooh. Yours was probably Danny Fortson. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I was UK or bust. <laughs> These guys all. Oh. Oh, man. So it's, uh... I also love that North Carolina was that color blue on their uniforms. But the bench is right. I thought I was the blue team. <laughs> Despite <laughs> knowing who I picked. <laughs> I was like, wow, Tim made a really good shot. I was like, wait, that was me and that was an accident. Oh, spring-loaded rims. Get out of here. Take it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I love the menu, actually. Is this also Kit's Row? Yes. Man. What a man. Yeah. Also does the introduction for the 48 Minutes podcast. Yep. On the 48 Minutes Network. Where, they, where, where, where can they find that? When does that go live? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Our shows. Yeah. Got a great Shot Callers NBA show on Monday with Kyle Brandon and Ben Brown holding it down. And you got Wednesdays, me and Sean Mackey. Well, when he's not in Alaska. <laughs> How long is he? Is he back? Or? I think this he should be back in the next few days, if I remember okay. correctly. Okay. I know. I don't remember if it was two weeks that he, he, he was in, in the old AK. I know he didn't know what to do himself having two weeks off work. Oh, I know. He texts me, goes, why do I feel guilty? I'm like, dude, don't? Yeah. You know what I was thinking about today? When I was like, thinking about, like you were like, yeah, hey, we're going to do the stream thing. Mm -hmm. Is this what, like, if Wayne's World came out in 2019, is this what it would be? Uh... I I will tell you off camera. Uh, actually, I can just say there's there's a, a podcast group that I like a lot called Kind of Funny. Uh, they're very big in the, in the in the Twitch world. Sure. They have a show on Wednesdays called KFAF, and it is a hundred percent what Wayne's World would be in 2019. <laughs> I remember the uh, recently I went on YouTube and I found clips of the old uh, Wayne's World Sega Genesis game mm. where like Garth gets kidnapped and Wayne's got to find him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and every time he like jumps on something, he just goes excellent. So okay, <laughs> now now this brings up a good question. So it's it's a side scroller beat him up. I'm assuming. Yes. Based off the plot. Yes. What weird weapons does Wayne have? Uh, he has a guitar. Okay. Yeah, and then on I brand. think yeah, I think he has like a um. I don't think it was a microphone. I think it was a video camera. Okay, so not, not nothing too absurd. It wasn't Chaos in the Windy City weird, no. Or Shaq Fu, or even the Simpsons game, you know, where, like, it kind of made sense, but at the same time, though, it, it didn't. You always think about those, like, cartoon video game, like, cartoon show video games that were, like, so, like, off-the-wall weird. Mm -hmm. Except like, for, like... This isn't canon. Except for, like, GameCube SpongeBob, for some reason, was good. Did you see the announcement today? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I did. Did you see the, the rehydrated version of... Battle for Bikini Bottom. I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see what systems. Uh, current gen. Oh, in that case. Yeah. Uh, if I probably won't spend sixty dollars for it, but I doubt it'll be sixty. Uh, it'll probably be forty, I would think. At most, I'd be surprised if it's more than that. But uh, THQ Nordic, the the company that's publishing it, uh, the, today, tomorrow, and Friday, they're announcing three new games. Oh, okay. So that was the first one. But there's the whole uh, Simpsons going to the Simpsons writers and producers are going to be E3 this year, and people are wondering if the THQ Nordic stuff, if one of those is maybe like a Simpsons Hit and Run remaster. Oh god, I didn't think about that. Yeah, so like there's that. Hopefully it's not Simpsons Wrestling. Oh, it won't be. The game's <laughs> awful. Uh, but uh, I would take. I would like that. I would like. Uh, 
that or like a remaster of, of the Simpsons game from when the movie came out, uh, just with trophy support, please. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot about. It. And then because that was actually a really good like 3D platformer. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like that on the table. There's possibly hit and run on the table. And there's just possibly they just want to have a weird panel at E3 and talk about the Simpsons. I, I that wouldn't make any sense to me. Uh, but uh then. I would. There's possibility like WB is going to be there, so like a Lego Simpsons game could possibly be a thing. But yeah, because they were in Lego Dimensions. Yeah, and with Disney, you know, being okay with like the Lego Star Wars game still existing, Disney owning the Simpsons now, it's you know possibly on the table that like there could be some new Simpsons games. Now at the same time though, there's that part of me that's like the Simpsons are 30 years old and no one really cares about them anymore. Why are they? Why would they still make games? But they're still like you know. I was just at Simpsons Land Universal. Yeah, I'm. I have not been there yet. It was wonderful. I'm sure. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I will get down there one day. One day. Nothing will ever beat Wizarding World, though, man. Oh, well, oh my yeah. god. I mean, that, that's your thing too, though. You yeah, know? like literally tatted on me. So yeah, like, so that, it's that, eternal. That place is your business. Ah, the coaching tips. Just because you successfully create a turnover doesn't mean that you get any points. This is such a Bob Huggins thing to Set say. Set your plays better, work the ball, and take advantage of the turnovers. It's such a Huggins thing. You got fucking Dean Smith up there yep. just <laughs> sneezing his words out or whatever. <laughs> his weird chin neck. You guys know I coach Michael Jordan, right? Well, that's my claim to fame. It's like my, um, one of my, like, one of our high school teachers I was always, like, talking about, like, guys he coached. Obviously, the biggest one was, you know. A former NFL MVP. Sure. <laughs> Which, respect. I'd be the same way. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, though, is he, are you sitting there like, ah, he's the reason he's so good is me. It's like, is it, though? Yeah, I hope not. I don't think it was that case. No. But it was great because he'd be like, hey, I don't want to do anything today in class. Here's Sean Alexander tapes. What the fuck? <laughs> like, dope. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like my high school was just like, we had Doug Pelfrey. It's like, cool... Doug Pelfrey, I remember one time I saw him speak at an event, and he talked about how in the all of his years of playing football, he never played for a good team. That's true. So he was at your high school. Yeah. Then he went and played football at UK, and then oh, went to the Bengals. Doug. <laughs> like, you have a six on threes. You should have made that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we got Speedy Claxton playing point. Like, what is this? Fitz was on this Carolina team. Uh, is he one of the two short bald men you were playing with? <laughs> I don't think so. Because it was Vince and Antoine Jameson together for like I think a couple years. Mm. That was fair. Yeah, because they were traded. Oh, oh. You remember they were traded for each other on draft night. Oh yeah. Because like the Warriors thing in the '90s was draft and trade on draft night for some reason. <laughs> Payne Hardaway, Vince Carter. Wow, what, uh, if they, what if they had kept those two together? Right. What if the Raptors had kept T-Mac and Vince? Yeah. What, what, if, what if the Bulls got Tim Duncan and Grant Hill that year in free agency? <laughs> oh, God. Or like when Rick Buecher said LeBron and Chris Bosh is a done deal to Chicago. Yeah. That came up on Shot Callers this week. Because uh. Rick Buecher said that uh, he came out and said Kyrie's narrowed it down to the Nets and the Lakers. Mm -hmm. and I was like, Can and you then, imagine if Kyrie goes back and goes, oh, fine, LeBron. Has this whole happy Gilmore Cubs <laughs> moment where he's like, "You're right, I'm wrong, yes. I'm ugly." Bleacher Report's already made the video. Don't think they haven't. The world's round. <laughs> you see, like Lonzo Ball in the background, like, "What about me, guys?" Dude, no. <laughs> yeah. Come on. He can go play ball with his dad. I love that he's trying to like distance himself from all that too. Yeah. Like, shout out to him. Oh, for sure. He needed to do that. Yeah, he talks about it actually on the shop. Oh really? Yeah, he, like he was pretty uh, pretty open about it. It was it was kind of it was it was impressive to see him like. Well, I'm sure it's cathartic that after 18 years, like yeah, my dad's kind of a prick. <laughs> he like unfollowed his dad on Instagram and. <laughs> it's like I mean I I said like that dude is gonna ruin his son's career. Sons is plural. Well, one careers. of them's already ruined. The other's now the other one can't play college ball. Lamello. Yeah. So Lamello was actually on 24-7. He was the number 19 rated player in the country. Mm -hmm. But no one gave him a scholarship offer because no one was like, no one knew if he was going to be eligible. Yeah. If he had been eligible, then like you would have known something. Like, not that there isn't already something wrong with the system. Sure. But like that would be like the, we told you so, that there's something wrong with the system. Right. Cut. 
Yeah, Speed Boy. Speed Boy. A, a rare arcade basketball pass from me. Oh, Speed and D. Come on, oh, you son of a bitch. I don't know, your mother's probably a very nice woman. <laughs> Very mean of me. I apologize, but you just gotta take it to him. Is that your Vince McMahon That's voice? That's good shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so you. It's so funny because um, I know you say you haven't listened yet. So Dustin Rhodes was on Jericho's pod today mm -hmm. and literally made the same references from like when he was talking <laughs> to Vince in like '97. He would say the same things about I'm gold not dust. Surprised. It's like that shit is money. <laughs> it's so you. This is good shit. Summer Slam! No, get it, get it, get it! Oh, my sweet summer child. No! <laughs> oh no! Oh, I put it up! I'm the three round! Duck it! Fuck you! No, put it up! <laughs> <laughs> Why am I alive? You invited me. Fucking play the game, Tim. Come on. <laughs> Over time, let's just fucking go. You have to try to force them outside. We don't care. I took your advice. It didn't work. You should check the score real quick in the finals. Point game. small. I, dude, I told you I can throw that up on here. It's not, no BD. Just put it up here. We're not using this whole screen, you know? We can use the, the old Watch ES Pen app. Well, Toronto's up to a 15 7 start. Good, it's a good start, so they're down by six. Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> this is, well, no. There's no Clay. There's no KD. Like, this is kind of like, okay, we're going to throw everything at Steph. Mm -hmm. So, box and one. Yeah, box and one. Which Draymond has promised to shred. <laughs> I saw, like, um, Kyle Lauer was like, it's kind of janky. <laughs> box and one's so janky. Someone... Oh, it's terrible. I forget who it was, but there was a college when, when Curry was still at Davidson. There was a college team. I still had him in college. The the coach ran a box and one on Curry, like specifically. He's like, yeah, this will work. And it shut Curry down, but he ended up putting up like 19 assists. And Curry's like, I mean, we still won. So like, I, I guess it worked. Like I didn't score, but we still won by like 13. Windhorse was talking about on his podcast uh, with Jackie McMullen. the rebound? And it was so funny. He's like, I remember like LeBron's second year in Cleveland. They were in a triangle and two on a bunch of people, and yeah. it worked for like three games. Yeah. And the scouting was like, we're stopping this. Well, it. I the one I always go back to was uh, Byron Scott's David West, Tyson Chandler, Chris Paul uh, pick and roll. Oh, it was beautiful. Because he he brought the pick and roll back to the NBA. Because like nobody was running a pick and roll offense like that. And they had the absolute perfect players for it because you had oh, yeah. Chandler who could cut as your as your role. David uh, West was like it's a beautiful David, role man. David West was a great role guy, but also like if Chandler gets shut off down low, West had a gorgeous mid range game and like a good post up game too. So like he was able to you know he was kind of versatile two way guy, uh, back to basket, face to basket, and then Chris Paul was just you know an icon. Yeah. And then one day the NBA like the rest of the coaches were like oh that's how we defend it. And then Byron Scott couldn't keep a job anymore. Nope. Because that was the thing, is everybody's like, oh, well, his pedigree or his, his resume from, like, New Orleans and it speaks for itself. And it's like, he takes over that Lakers squad and it's like, oh, he's not good. Yeah. Like, the league has figured him out. Get it. People seem to forget, Byron Scott was the coach of the Nets when they went to the NBA Finals. Yep. Off of the back of a Calipari team, but, you know. Yep. Whatever. I like how Larry Brown just took over what Rick Carlisle did. Oh, yeah. 100%. Aha. Yeah. This is a ball game. Come on. Come on. Come on. No! <sighs> dick three. Good enough. <laughs> just a dick dunk. 
Ah. Uh, has Sean ever called Dick Three on you? Uh, probably. Where he takes uh, when he's up by like eighteen or nineteen, and then takes like a long range three with the center and makes it. <laughs> no, I haven't had that happen. Okay, yeah, he he'll pull he pulls Dick Three on. He used to pull Dick Three on me all the time, where he'd just be like up by like twenty two with like two minutes left in the fourth and just huck up some half court shot with fucking Olgalskis or something like that, and he would go Dick Three and it would go in, and I'm like, ow, every time. Be like Mikey Moore. There's someone else that's not in the league anymore. Look at that. It's a beautiful logo. What, a, what an image that is. I know. We should, I want to get a tattooed on me. You should. Look at me. Highest individual season game score. Right there. There you go. Yeah. Represent. I don't, I don't know if I have anything else. <laughs> you got the one that matters. Right. I got the first one. The rest of these guys aren't real. Not real. Is that Curry limping off? Oh, okay. I was like, oh my god. In that case, don't even play the finals. <laughs> I think it's done. You can actually do I think it's a full 64 tournament. Season matchups. Really? You can, do, you can do a nice little final four. You can do a final four? Yeah. Interesting. Ah. Uh, yeah, ah uh, is going to be... Uh, let's go... This is probably the Bibby Dickerson Miles Simon. Yep. We'll, we'll run that. It's either 96 or 97. Uh, let's see. Can you can you control this? Is this you? No. Okay. So this is gonna be bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Noticing a trend here. Yeah, who, who, who's who's bad? Who are we gonna be? Oh, dude, it's gotta be Kentucky. Okay. okay. Derek Anderson. Well, I mean, it's probably like Saul Smith and Nazi Muhammad because I've changed the names. Oh yeah. But uh. Okay. So then we've got uh, Interplayer Three is gonna be cat. <laughs> this be UMass. Okay. We're going back in this time, so. Well, we're assuming. Right. I'm pretty sure it's 96, you know. 96, 97. And then who's, is this going to be Da? Well, yeah. <laughs> I think this one should be a Randall. Let's just, just. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I haven't picked. I'm so nervous. I want to get deep in the alphabet, you know? It's going to be like fucking Duquesne or some shit. <laughs> like, how'd they get in here? And... It is... Southern Cal. All right. <laughs> Arizona and UMass to start. <laughs> this is, wait, did this just make it... Okay, you're here, you're here. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to hope that's Marcus Camby for the sake yeah, of this. Jesus, I don't even know. We'll go him and uh, him. Stupid college games. Yeah, I heard, I'm sure you've heard there's talks about it coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get around that licensing. And the NCAA is such a, you know, money machine. Look at that man's mustache back there. That's... What? <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll take it, but what? Your team is so tall. Yeah. Ah. That was who we think is Marcus Camby from three? Possibly Marcus. It could also be, like, <laughs> alternate <laughs> player. I'm trying to think of, like, other UMass players, and I'm like, um, you know. There, there weren't any. It was just Marcus Camby, and then the, the whole organization fell apart. That, uh, there's a 30 for 30 on Calipari. Mm. And it's amazing. Cause it talks sure. about when he got to UMass and how he was, like... At a conference meeting for like the uh, the whole like conference, and they were like, "Hey, why aren't we on any TV games?" Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Well, you guys are UMass." He's like, "All right, by next year, we'll be on every TV. We'll have, we'll we'll be on, every game we have will be on TV." Yeah. And sure enough, I think it was like two years in. He talks about like there's one bit in there that's super funny. So when he got fired by the Nets, Larry Brown hired him to be his to uh, hired him to be his top assistant mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. And they were playing the Nets, and so that, you know, when your coach gets fired, they got to pay out the contract still. Right. And so when Larry Brown got ejected, Cal Parr was the lead assistant, so he was coaching against the Nets, the team that fired him. While getting paid by the While them. getting paid by the Nets. Strange flex, but okay. Yes, and no. beat them. Great. <laughs> yes. So when it comes to college, I mean, yeah, you get people like Coach K who have this, you know, dynasty lined up based off of, you know, actual ability, and you see him carry over into, like, gold medal stuff with, uh, yeah. with like, FIBA and the Olympics and things like that. When you get someone like Calipari or, uh, 
you know, the, some of the other coaches, like a Sean Miller or something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just throwing that name as the first one that came to my head. Uh, how much of it, like, what what balance do you think it is between actual coaching ability and recruiting ability? Well, I think Cal gets a lot of shit from people saying he's not a good coach, and that's mm-hmm. 100% wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, really wrong. I do think he is a better recruiter than a coach. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Like, he's the... I don't think there's anyone in the country better at selling their program than him. Sure. Um, but people are like, well, you know, he can't coach. I'm like, you know, they got to get to the Elite Eight every year at the best, you know, at worst. Mm-hmm. He makes these five dudes who are like the shit in their hometown figure out how to play together for 35 games a year. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that takes a lot of skill. Sure. Sean, as far as his end, like, <laughs> you know, I've got a lot of opinions on Sean Miller. I know. Um, But... I don't know, man. I think uh, he's got certain things that have been coming out to say why he's a good recruiter. Yeah. Um, it involves uh, something that has to rhyme with a uh, duffel. So if, if you look at, like, we'll go more local, less offensive. Uh, Brennan from, like, NKU, now you see Cronin, formerly from UC, now UCLA. He's gonna, uh, I think he's going to struggle out there. I do, too. Uh, and then you look at, like, a Chris Mack, who's, you know, from Xavier to Louisville. Mm-hmm. How much of that do you think is, where do you rate them in terms of coaches versus recruiters? Ooh, this is a good one. So, I think John Brannon is actually, like, an incredible coach, mm-hmm. honestly, man. Like, he really believes in 94 feet. Like, he, 94 feet both ways is how he wants to play. Mm-hmm. Um, he will literally full court press a whole game. Like, it is, it's... No, obviously not to the same talent level Patino had. Sure. But it's Patino-esque. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy watching that. And I, honestly, he's done a pretty good job in UC for having a short off season of recruiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a couple grad transfers, which would be huge for them next year. Because like, it was looking there for a first, like, they might lose the Crosstown by 25 this year. Yeah. And um, But now it's, it's looking like it's going to be a really fun game, so I'm looking forward to it. Chris is just... Chris is, like, between the the guys you just named, he's the best with, like, that mm. balance. Mm-hmm. Chris would, like, get, you know, Chris would get, like, a top 25 recruiting classes at Xavier, mm-hmm. and then he would make them, you know, get ones and one and two seats in the tournament. Like, that was kind of his thing. He always he was such a great, he was so good at player development, and I think that's why he's going to thrive at Louisville. Yeah. Especially, like, they've got the number two recruiting class in the country coming in this year. Damn. Behind just, Memphis? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's he's unbelievable and like I was obviously heartbroken to see him leave Xavier, but I was so stoked for him at the same point. Sure, because yeah, he I mean, definitely earned movie, it. You know? He definitely earned it. Travis is really good too. Travis is a really good recruiter. Mm-hmm. Travis Steele. Mm-hmm. So Z- NKU's new coach, right? Xavier's new coach. Xavier's new coach. Okay. Yeah, uh, NKU's new coach is Darren Horn. Who? That's right. Yeah, I've gotten to kind of hang out with a little bit since he's like the job, and he's been awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm excited, man. It's a uh, I didn't think I would love college basketball again the way I have since I started working in it. Sure. I miss it so much. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure. Like, that's... I, you know, I, that was always, like, kind of, like, my first, like, love with basketball was through college. And we were both running small ball. Uh, and so, I mean, like, to kind of see the local teams kind of, like, all come together, especially now with, like, you know, NKU being a D1 school. Mm-hmm. And actually having a modicum of success, you know, as a mid-major and everything. Uh just kind of getting some bad tournament draws but yeah uh, <laughs> it's like playing the team that was the national runner-up right uh and then kentucky but uh just kind of like looking at that it, it's cool it's cool to see because like i think that's one thing that always goes understated with like especially in the midwest right like it's it, like here like within like you know the golden triangle of kentucky and all in, in ohio it is uk it is uc and then you get those offset you know like subset people that are louisville that are xavier that you get those weird like miami red hawk fans that are still like wally but uh yeah this is a very very great basketball area it really is and like it's cool to see like you know a team get added into that lump you know with the norse and everything and actually within their own kind of like realm of having striking distance like doing well yeah and it just kind of shows that there's a good like pipeline here you know absolutely man this is like a darren horn nku's coach said it best he's like this is a basketball area mm-hmm. like we, one of the things we talked about when he was on the he was on at large bid was was like you know it's kind of neat for you that you're in a situation where you've got five guys within two hours that understand what you're going through right and like not many other college basketball coaches have that right and I think, you know, going back to being, like, from a, like, location proximity kind of thing, too, 
college basketball is really, I think, the only sport this area doesn't have, like, wholesale shitty fans with. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like, there are shitty fans. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, you'll have that with any sport, but, like, our baseball, like, our the vocal minority with baseball, the vocal minority with football is so much louder than it is with, like, mm -hmm. college sports. You know, like, college sports, everyone just blames the ref and bounces. And uh, threatens hockey, to, everybody just threatens to close their business and and well and then you get like you know our minor league hockey system and stuff like that where everyone's just too drunk to even give a fuck right? yeah they go for fun right and then but like with college it's like yeah like we blame the refs and then that's it and you bounce and like some of the fans are a little more annoying than others but mm -hmm. it's nowhere near as prevalent and as like full 180 on something like like the demand for excellence i don't think is as rampant uh, with the college sports it is from a pro level in in this area. Yeah, I agree. Because, like, yeah, you know, you get UK fans that are like, oh, we should win every game. And it's like, yeah, I mean... Hindsight, on, probably. On paper, you probably should. Yeah. Uh, like, every other year. Because it seems like Calipari's has, a, like, a S-tier recruiting class about every, every other. Uh, but then, like, the UC fans, they're like, yeah, like... It's great we get to the tournament every year, but second round or first round exits aren't good enough. Yeah, my thing about my thing about UC fans, and this isn't like a dig, right. it's they kind of have little people syndrome, mm -hmm. where like they think like, like no one ever believes in us. I'm like, what have you guys done for them to believe in you? Right, and I mean you're especially locally, you're in that shadow of UK. Yeah, which and like is you know, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight undefeated up until Wisconsin one other championship perennial final four teams and stuff like the that the Anthony Davis team yeah the team that was an eighth seed and went to the national championship mm -hmm. UC fans are kind of funny though in a sense not just completely pick on them here <laughs> but like they're like they were like in my mentions at times this year for being a Xavier writer being a Xavier reporter and I'm like look guys I get it I love the rivalry too mm -hmm. and I get you guys won this year but like Xavier's won 25 of the last 32 right <laughs> like Let's calm it down. Like, it's just, you know, I, I think, <clears throat> okay, so going back to the constant demand that, like, the professional sports have here, I think with the uh, local teams, it's more focused on the rivalries. Mm -hmm. It's more focused on... Not again. <laughs> it's, it's, like... it, well, I mean, you wouldn't want. Yeah. But uh, it's more focused on, like, an us versus them mentality. Sure. Where, as opposed to us versus the management. Yeah, it, it, it feels much more blue collar with the professional sports. Agreed. Nice. I've never been able to make heads or tails of it. All right, you want UK on this one? Sure. All right, I'll take. Yeah, see Smith, Shepard, uh, Edwards, Turner, and McGlure. Oh man. And yeah, none of those are right. Give me all that Jamal McGlure. I think ish. Maybe. <laughs> I will take shooting guard. I'll, keep her, I'll, keep her, I'll, I'll run small the first half. Mm. You know, when people get wood, they think of Trojans. It's because of the horse in yeah. the wall of Troy. Uh -huh. I used to always laugh, too. Like, um, there was this thing for a while where like people were like making fun. You know, USC football is obviously sure unbelievable. Yeah, that their baseball program. And people were like, those guys are dumb. They gave Reggie Bush a house. I'm like... I would have given Reggie Bush a house mm -hmm. if I had to. That's what it took to get him to play for my team. Yep. Yeah, he would have had a house. You give Reggie Bush a house. You give Reggie Bush's mom a house. You give yep. Reggie Bush's mailman a house. That delivers on <laughs> mail to. Like you yeah. do whatever Reggie Bush wants. <laughs> yeah. You buy a house for his alligator. He doesn't have because you're gonna buy him an alligator. Oh. Yeah. He was by far the most disgusting college football player I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. Even like you know I I grew up a Notre Dame football fan just watching like like my love of football is far gone than what it used to be. Sure. But, like, you know, I can still appreciate unbelievable athleticism. Oh, yeah. And he had all of that. Yeah. Reggie Bush was a monster. Yeah, it wasn't fair, the things he did to children. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's what they are, too. Yes, yeah, exactly what I mean. That's why I always laugh when people get so upset about college basketball. I'm just like, oh, man, like, I get, I get really upset when, like, people, like, say horrible things about, like, 18 year old kids. I'm like, yeah, it's like you guys they, need to relax. Like, they're 18. Right. Like, you're mad at where that boy chose to go to school. Yeah, like, and you that's threatened his family from. over it. It's like, oh, I'm going to kill Zion. It's like, the dude is 18. Um, yeah, Tyler Hero, who went to Kentucky, he was originally committed to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And, like, have you ever heard anyone say a bad thing about Wisconsin? Like, no. being mean or I rude? I, I love Bo Ryan. Right. 
Yeah. So. Oh. So Tyler Hero decommits from Wisconsin to go to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And he said the next morning he woke up and his house was spray painted. Man. Yeah. Actually, the more I watched that kid play this year, the more I loved him. Yeah. Like, Did he sign with an agent? Yeah, he's he's for sure not coming back. Okay. I think he's probably going to go in that 15 to 20 range. Okay. Like, everything says he'll be a pacer. It just sounds right. Mm-hmm. Or a Celtic. The Raptors are up by eight right now. Yeah. So they're actually down by five. Yes. Going off the of Warriors logic. Yeah. The Warriors well, don't care so. Score- How come no one calls them the Scorriers? <laughs> True. Also, really, what I am really disappointed in is two things of pop culture extraordinaire like you and I are. Mm-hmm. First one. Why is it they've never used the song The Warrior by Patti Smythe? I couldn't tell you. Like, it's a pretty great song. It's not bad. And then also, the this classic movie, Warriors. Yeah. They never have anything in the arena that references it. It's probably a licensing thing. You can't just, you know, throw that shit up there. Like, say you're at, well, I guess now that Oracle's over. So say you're at Chase Arena, what, what's going to be next year, mm-hmm. in San Francisco. And, like, all the lights go out after the... After the r- come out. The yes! Fire. I know, it'd be awesome. The lights shoot on, like... Yeah. I mean, it's me saying that Oklahoma City missed the point not calling it Thunderdome. Oh, for sure. Yes. Like, I think when Instead, they... Instead, re- we got Triple H having a Mad Max reference. Which, fucking whatever. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Oh, right in the hands. Bucket. Nope, no bucket. Dunk on him. Funky layup on him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he was going for there. Do we have college basketball shot clock on this? Oh, God, I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you. Probably doesn't even have one. Just randomly pre-shot clock era. <laughs> oh, my God, I this game. Which also was because of Kentucky and UC. Huh. The hold game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're up by two. It's two nothing. <laughs> Pass it. Like, what? It's awful. Who would want to play this? Was there a... Was it like a, in the 40s or something? There was a Lakers like NBA game that ends for, the finals like 18 to 14? The, the, I, I couldn't tell you that. I just know in the shot clock era, the lowest score ever put up was 49 points. That what? was by the 99 Bulls. <laughs> the year after they won the title. Yep. It was a, it was a fucking Fred Hoiberg playing year. Yeah. Did you see, uh, dude? We were cracking up. We were about um, so Hoiberg went and did. Uh, he was doing all his media after taking the job in Nebraska. He was like, "This is the job for me. This is what I've like. This is what I've always wanted." And I'm of like, <laughs> "Yes, Fred." Yeah. What coach's dream isn't Nebraska, Nebraska basketball? Yeah. Who? When I remember when I was a kid and people were like, "What do you want to do?" I was like, oh, "I want to be a basketball playing doctor astronaut that will eventually retire as the coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers." <laughs> Okay, that's it. That's what. That's your aspiration. Like, yes. You're going to uh, you, pro- probably Saul Smith and probably Wayne Turner. Yeah. You want to take a wild guess off top of your head? Nebraska's all-time record in the NCAA tournament. Uh, wild guess. I'm gonna say 0 and 2. You had the O right. <laughs> Is it 0 and 0? It's 0 and 7. Oh. Literally been seven times. Man, not even made it out, huh? Yeah. We always crack up. Um. So the guy who. His predecessor, Fred Hoiberg's predecessor in Nebraska was Tim Miles, mm-hmm. who was voted the ultimate nice guy in basketball. Yeah. So he got fired this year from Nebraska. <laughs> he, like, went and told the newscasters. He's like, all right. He's like, well, thanks for everything. And he's like, hey, I'm going to drive away now. Do you guys want me to get a good shot and, like, a drive away so you guys get a good pan of my car leaving? <laughs> he literally asked them that. Aww. <laughs> like, what a nice guy. <laughs> So that would have been like, is that one good? Do you need me to do it again? Do you need me to back up and try this again? <laughs> he went on one shining podcast and talked about it. He's like, yeah, that's true. I did that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. He actually had a kind of like a okay idea of how to pay college basketball players. Really? It was kind of neat. So he's like, every school should just give the coach like a certain amount of like incentive to give the players throughout the year. He's like, and if you lead in stats, like the coach gets to decide like who gets what. He's like, but not points because everyone's gonna just want to shoot. He's like, but like, did you die for 50-50 balls? Did you for, did you get a defensive stop? Did you Hustle get a money. kill? Right. And he's like, oh. And they're like, well, could we do like one for taking charge? He's like, no, because Brad Davidson from Wisconsin would like have all the money. <laughs> 
which is very true. Brad, da Brad Davidson would be a millionaire in college basketball. But I don't hate it. I'm so excited about Jawan Howard. Mm -hmm. I'm so pumped. Where did he just take over? Michigan. Michigan. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, uh, so Jalen Rose goes on the get up and he's like, the brief's over. The Fat Five's back together. And apparently Rachel Nichols is like, I talked to Chris Weber and she's like, he's like, well, we didn't squash any beef, but like, <laughs> we'll, on paper, but like, we'll be there. You know, if we got, if, we're, if that means we're going to all be together to support Juwan, then we'll be there. Congratulate Juwan. <laughs> yes. I so badly tried to find, like, see if I could just like put that clip into our episode mm -hmm. when we talked about it. But he like went in his pressure, dude. He cried. Aw. That's it, really good, though. It was awesome. Cause he's yeah. like, last time I was in this room was when I declared for the NBA draft, and I thought I failed the school because we didn't win a national title. I'm like, you guys played in two in a row. Yeah. You know, it's Chris Webber's fault, really. Yeah. Where's Stackhouse coaching now? Vanderbilt. That's right. Yeah. And he's got Kenya Martin and Scotty Pippen's kid coming in. Wow. Kenny Martin's a little old to be playing basketball, right? Yeah. <laughs> Coughed it up. Nope. Oh, fancy dunk. Definitely not Saul Smith. No, Saul Smith had hair. Yeah, I know. That's more like a Shimu Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I can deep cut a good UK player in the late 90s. Don't, don't come at me. Let's see. I wonder, I, I know, I wonder if it's supposed to be Derek Anderson then. Probably. I was going to say Mercer, but... Yeah, it was about the time. Mercer's yeah. junior year. Yeah. Well, Mercer left after his sophomore. That's right. Yeah. Mercer's last year was 97. Because his freshman year, he won the... Won the title. He started actually coming out in the tournament a little bit. People were like, oh, shit, this guy's going to be good. You talk about a dude who got a raw deal in the NBA. Oh, for sure, he man. He was actually, like, a really good pro and then ended up getting benched to shit in San Antonio. Yep. Because he was a good bull. He was a good pacer. Yeah, he was. He was an okay Celtic, like... He had a good career going, and then just as he got traded, he progressively got benched further and further. I do feel bad for him because he was a consolation prize, basically, for Patino. Because Patino basically went to Boston because he thought he was going to get Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But still drafted Chauncey. Yep. First. And he traded him. First pick. Traded him during his rookie year. Was it? To Denver. Huh. I, I thought it was a little later than that. There's a, yeah, if you look at like the teams Chauncey Bills played for before he got settled in with the Pistons... Mm -hmm. It's nuts. Yeah. His, I loved his time in Denver, though. Oh, dude, that first, same. That, the first round in Denver. Or no, the second round in Denver, rather. Not. Like him and, like, Iverson and all that. Or... Him, Iverson. Yeah, JR. Yeah, he never played with Iverson. He was traded for Iverson. So it would have been. Yeah, him. the Pistons him. trade. Would have been him and Melo and. JR, Kenyon. Eventually Ty Lawson, I think, too, at some point. Yeah. There we go. Upset. The national championship is USC, the national title. Mm -hmm. Against uh, Arizona. Man, this just sounds like a walking violation. Oof. Oh, God. The other thing is, too, if you, anyone knows anything about current college basketball, that these are two Pac-12 schools. Uh, yeah. Pac-12 is awful. <laughs> Pac-12 Pac is doing the best they can, Tim. <laughs> I, I don't think that's true, Alex. I really they don't. They are trying their best, maybe. I don't know. I mean... They like are in California. They should like they should be able to get good players. <sighs> should they though? Yes. Mm. UCLA is the most prestigious person. Look, actually, UCLA is basically the Notre Dame football of college basketball now. I was gonna say, come on. <clears throat> and they have McCronin. Mm -hmm. And his four foot sixness. He definitely I has some little man syndrome. I really shouldn't mock him because he was super nice to me. Sure. But, like, it's so easy. I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> like, he is also, that, like, a total jerk. We had a, a manager like that when I worked in independent baseball who was, like, a nice guy, but... Was also, it Chris Sabo? But uh, No, no, no. Uh, but also, like, I couldn't even tell you the guy's name now. Uh, but, like, everybody hated him because he was good. And, like, he knew he was good. As, like, a coach or as, like, a manager. Mm -hmm. Like, it was one of those where it's just, like, huh, like, you're kind of an asshole, but, like, you're really nice. And he had, like, a really good sense of humor because he was, like, five foot one. And we had free reign on the soundboard where, like, when it came to the opposing team, you could do whatever the fuck you wanted. Like, whatever you wanted. No... No holds barred when it came to the visiting teams. Unless it was the team that actually didn't have a home. 
Because there was an actual, there was like a like just traveling road team. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and so they're like, be nice to them. They don't have a place to live. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> But uh, these guys are playing for six thousand dollars a year and don't have a regular place to stay. Yeah, and so uh, he would take the mound to visit the pitchers, and we'd always play Randy Newman short people. <laughs> and like the first time we did it, there was like this kind of like weird hush in the control room and in the press box because like <laughs> we're like uh, I was like, do it, just play it, just fucking play Randy <laughs> Newman short people when this guy comes out. And so this guy is like, you know, five foot two and the first lyrics are short people, short people, short people don't got no reason to live, right? <laughs> and then he starts describing the short people where they have little hands, little eyes, they walk around <laughs> telling great big lies, short people got no reason to live. Like it's a really harsh song. <laughs> and so we play it. <laughs> Over these, you know, over through the, the arena speakers, <laughs> and you hear over the headset, "Fuck, are they playing short people for that guy?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "Oh fuck, is this my last day? <laughs> like, did I just push the limit?" And then, like, you see him like look up at the press box and then just go, <laughs> and then continue the walk, and we're like, "Ah, whoo, okay, <laughs> whoopsie!" Like, got got a newfound respect for that man because oh shit, that could have been bad. <laughs> I like could not have done that job because I would have been like the worst. Oh no, we were the worst. A after like I got let go at the end of the season and they restaffed it, uh, they put in so many rules in place basically to like undo all the stuff we had done over the last like three years. Because like I was there oh nine, uh, and then twenty ten, and then half of twenty eleven before they shut the whole thing down entirely, and summarily let all of us go. Uh, but we did the short people thing in like twenty ten and. Yeah, but, like, there were so many things. I remember, like, people would send me, like, yeah, look at this document that got passed around. It's like, tater tots are not an ad. I'm like, <laughs> man, they're taking away all the fun. <laughs> tater tots. And you'd be like, this at bat is brought to you by tater tots. And it's like, <laughs> just put an image in. We had one. So, are you, you know that image from Jeff Goldblum in The Fly? Oh, yeah. The, the meme where the Jeff, Jeff Goldblum Goldblum's watching you poop. Or watching you pee or whatever. So, we would pick one batter every game and I'd be like they're the gold bloom <laughs> and he would like that batter would come up and uh, as long as they're outside <clears> the batter's <throat> box you can say and play whatever you want like right like it's once in the batter's box shit's gotta shut down right and so like the, right before they'd step in we'd kill the music and the PA announcer would go Jeff Goldblum watches you swing and we'd put that image up from him with a fly. And the way the board was, and the way like the actual like plate and everything was, he stared down directly <laughs> at you. And so he literally was just this <laughs> like omnipotent gold bloom. And uh, I think like for a while, like the first like handful of uh, batters would strike out or would like pop out. And I'm like, we're keeping the gold bloom batter. <laughs> we also we had that. And we had the uh, seventh inning spoiler where at the bottom of the or the top of the seventh we'd spoil a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be like, up next for Southern Illinois, the second baseman, blah blah blah. Bruce Willis was a ghost the whole time, and we put it up on the board <laughs> like the seventh inning spoiler. Like it's just, it's just dumb shit. Cause like it didn't matter. Right. At the end of the day, none of that mattered. And so we were just like, hey, can we do this? And then we were all like independently contracted, including like our boss. And so I'd go to there and be like, hey, can we do this? She'd be like, I don't care. <laughs> like, that's the right attitude. <laughs> and then it'd be like the general manager, the front office person, like, you guys cannot do that. And we're like, so do it? <laughs> like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, okay. Oh, man. That job was great until it wasn't. I, I will say that about about working in in independent, no holds barred baseball is uh, it was great until it, it just it wasn't. Oh, popped him out. Dunk on him. Oh snap. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> it was like a Yao Ming free throw. <laughs> Splits the defenders. Oh, shit. The old Trojan comeback. Ugh. Gross. I was <laughs> <laughs> as, as soon as I left my mouth, I'm like, ugh. I've done that video times where I've said, I'm like, no, don't say it. Don't, don't. It's like a kingpin. Woody Harrelson gets the Trojan sponsorship because they start calling him the rubber man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, right in the face. I was going to say, that went in. 
<clears throat> good old Kingpin. I forgot about that movie. That's so good. Yeah. Best bowling movie ever made. I don't care. No, Big Lebowski's not a bowling movie. And if some, somebody's watching this now or is going to come back to it, and they're going to be like, oh, Big Lebowski, I just needed to get that out. Big Lebowski is great, but Big Lebowski is much better film noir movie than it is a bowling movie. Right, yes. It's like a kind of like a cult classic-ish. It's, it's like it's like saying Air Bud's a great dog movie. It's like, no, Air Bud's a great basketball movie about a dog. Yeah. Come yeah. on, guys. Get together. Come on. How I always argue the first Rocky isn't a boxing movie. It's not. I know. It's a love there's, story. There's 20 minutes of boxing in the first Rocky, and it's a two-hour movie. I'm still working on... Ah, no. I still think the Rocky Cinematic Universe is the best cinematic universe ever created. At us. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can find all the social links at the bottom here. <laughs> uh, but, uh... Now, I, I want to, like, do, like, rank those abs. Or, like, like rank the Rocky bod. You know, like, movie yeah. by movie. Like, what... Because, like, obviously you have second second Lang fight in Rocky 3, where he's, like, almost like Rambo 3 quality where it's just like was he ad. shitting both of them at the same time i think he was yeah which was why but like he was like 100 even like in his book he's like yeah this was not a good weight for me he's like i was 175 pounds like this was i was incredibly low fat all i ate was because uh in rocky 2 all he ate was like yogurt yeah and then that's how he tore his uh peck and that's why the bulk of rocky they rewrote the fight for rocky 2 to be like he's got to fight left-handed because he tore his right or he, he had to fight right-handed because he tore his left pec. Ah. Oh. So he actually had limited muscle use. And Makes so sense. like, uh, we need to change the script. He is going to fight right-handed because he can't use his left right now. Uh, but then, like, I look at stuff like Kree 2 in terms of, like, fight hype. Like, the entrances and stuff like that. Like, those are some all-time great yes. entrances are in Kree 2. Because you have, like, Apollo's, you know, Stars and Stripes Forever and Rocky. You have the Living in America and Rocky 4. But... Like those first shot on fire. Uh, it's those. It's just the Kree and the Drago entrances. Yeah, they're just so fucking good in Creed too. I also like very much love Tessa Thompson. Mm -hmm. Love her very much. You and I'm see that new Men in Black. No, <laughs> I don't love her that much. No. I do appreciate that in the trailer they made a reference to Endgame. Mm-hmm. Did you see the new National Lampoon's Vacation movie with Ed Helms? No, I didn't know there was one. Yeah, it came out a few years ago. It's oh, I can't. I do remember that. Her, him, Christina Applegate. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I oh, do God, remember it's it. It's fucking funny, but Chris Hemsworth has a really good cameo in there. Oh, shit. Clutch, come on. Clutch. There we go. Two-point game. Go in, go in, go in. No! Oh, shit. Oh, you have made that? I've been so mad. Okay. Well, that works, too. I'm off campus. Oh! Shit. Oh! National champion Arizona Wildcats. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it an evening here, because typically we, we run this business. Sean Miller, did you see that? We won a title with Arizona. Yeah, yeah, sort of Lute Olson. So we want to thank you guys. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, man. It was a lot of coming. fun. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Anytime, you know? We do this. This is every Wednesday. We're here. Varying amounts of streams. Every Wednesday. We whether it's Overwatch, whether it's retro stuff, you know. It is what it is, and we do what we do here. So, Tim, thank you for joining me one last time. Tell everybody where they can find you. At Tim Daniel 518 on Twitter and Instagram. At 48 Minutes Network on Twitter and Instagram. 48 Minutes Network.com. 48 Minutes Basketball Network on all of your podcast apps except for SoundCloud, basically. Check it out. And remember, you can always catch me every single Monday here on twitch.tv slash pressxdalex, where I do the PlayStation forecast around 7.30 Eastern time, and the video and audio file, of course, on demand goes up Tuesday, midnight. It used to be 9 a.m. Fuck that noise. We don't do that anymore. And if you want to help support these streams and these, their podcast, you can support it at patreon.com slash pressxdalex. We're just... One dollar a month at the one tier to rule them all. But if you don't have that buck to toss, never you mind and never you worry and never you bother. You can just share it 
post it, retweet it, do whatever you got to do to help this grow, as I say each and every week. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for joining Tim here. Tim, thank you for joining me. And remember, I love you. I will see you next time. And do the thing. Do the thing. That was fun. I had a rough day, but that's life, it happens. Woke up on the dark side of my mattress. I guess I forgot to set my clock. Overslept, almost lost the job. Been to top it off, I'm kind of hungry. But can't eat till I find my money. It's in my wallet, but my wallet ain't in my pocket. Can't remember the last time I saw it. And they don't want me in a bad mood. Afraid that it'll spread and everyone to catch an attitude. They got them all singing the same tune. Thinking I should go and start a fire in the break room. Co-workers make me sick And the manager really ain't shit But I can't quit So I'm hiding in the basement Holding on to my face Like fuck this place Every day can't be the best day Do what you can right now Don't hesitate That's why we try to make love and get paid Take the bad with the good Now let's play Every day can't be the best day Do what you can right now Don't hesitate That's why we try to make love and get paid